through investigative means, we were able to identify the caller as a 13-year-old Daytona Beach resident. Friday marked the fourth day in a row that Buddy Taylor Middle School received a threatening phone call. This time an arrest was made. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley. On Friday, deputies responded to another bomb threat at Buddy Taylor Middle School. 19 patrol cars responded along with our Homeland Security section and our criminal intelligence unit detectives. A real-time crime center also assisted along with our partners from FDLE. Sheriff's deputies contacted Daytona Beach Police Department, Volusia County Sheriff's Office, and joined them in apprehending the 13-year-old and arresting him for three third-degree felonies related to the threat call. He stated he did it because he was dared to by a friend that attends Buddy Taylor Middle School. Even if a friend dares you doesn't mean you should do it. He found that out the hard way when he wore handcuffs while he was being arrested and taken to the Volusia County Juvenile Assessment Center. Sheriff Staley said this was a copycat crime and investigations continue on calls made earlier in the week. We are still continuing the investigation on the other calls, but the community should know that we take all threats seriously and we are conducting an extensive investigation into these calls in partnership with our state, local, and federal partners. Flagler School Superintendent Lashaka Moore had this message for students and parents as they prepare for school this week. I will assure you that we have a very detailed safety protocol that is followed in each of these events. And our students, faculty, and staff have demonstrated that they are aware of these pro- these procedures and that they implemented them extremely well. At this time, the sheriff has confirmed that there are at least five other counties that have experienced these same swatting calls within our time frame. And the sheriff has also determined that at this time, there is no credible threat to Flagler County. So all of our planned end of year events will continue and we will continue to do everything that we can in order to have a safe end of year. But we take these threats seriously and we will respond utilizing our safety protocols each and every time. Again, I know it's been a stressful week. It has been a stressful week for our students, for our faculty, our staff, as well as our chef department. But we're going to do everything in our power to ensure that our students have a great end of year. Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Monday, May 20th. Ellis Stewart, a veteran political advisor and CNN political commentator who worked on several GOP presidential campaigns, has passed away. Stewart was well known in the Flagler business community, serving as a keynote speaker at the Flagler Tiger Bay Club for years. She was also sister of Heather Thompson, a Flagler broadcasting employee. Jay Shear is the president of the Flagler Tiger Bay Club. The Flagler Tiger Bay Club is just so deeply saddened to hear the news of Alice's passing. I mean, just such a an amazing talent and someone who was just wicked, smart, kind, gracious, and such a passion for politics. And, you know, we were very fortunate to have Alice speak to our group, actually on multiple occasions, more than three occasions. And she was always a favorite who would speak at our annual December holiday celebration dinner. And she is going to be sorely missed. And we are just, uh, you know, we're sending our heartfelt condolences to her entire family, including one of our corporate corporate members, Heather Thompson, who obviously is embedded in this community. And we certainly hope that everyone will join us in keeping their family in their thoughts during this difficult time. Alice Stewart was 58 years old. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. We start the week with a bit of bad news. Tag V. Bear won't be traveling as much as he used to. So Tag is overweight. He's very <laughs> difficult to drag around. He'll be at the festival in June. That's Kathy Astrino of Tag Ventures, who said on a recent episode of Lifeline that Tag V. Bear has been enjoying his fam and lots of treats. She said there won't be dinner to celebrate Tag and Rita's anniversary, since you can only invite so many to dinner. This year, it will be a festival for all. This year we're turning it into a festival because it opens it up to the whole community. 
Tag the Bear will be there. Lifeline is on WNCF Saturday mornings at 9, and it's on the Flagler Radio app. Tomorrow, in case you forgot, we go all the way back to when Tag got a mate. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll. And now, Mike Lee Show with your WNZF local sports update. The University of North Florida was the host for the FHSAA State Track and Field Championships this weekend. Saturday, Colby Cronk stole the show with a shot put of 63 feet and three quarters of an inch, nearly eight feet longer than the second place finisher, four feet longer than his prior personal record, and the tenth longest throw in FHSAA history. Cronk on his approach to breaking a school record. I made sure to get the first throw in, a really solid one, and then my coach told me, as soon as you get that first one in, just get after it, and that's what I tried doing, and uh, I think it worked. Colby on winning a gold medal like his sister Michaela did as a swimmer at FPC. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm loving it, but uh, she had seven, so. <laughs> in the discus, Kronk had a personal best throw of 56 meters, setting his second school record of the day to earn a silver medal. Medals from Elijah Thero and Zelly Hayworth in the javelin propelled FPC into an eighth place tie with Mandarin for a team finish on the podium. On Friday, Matanzas runner Sierra Howard competed in the 800. After one lap, she was in 11th place, but rallied in the second lap to find her way to eighth. Yeah, I started counting the girls in front of me, and I was like, one, two, three. Nine. I'm nine. So I was like, if I can just pass the girl in front of me, top eight. Howard on winning a medal in her final high school race. I mean, this is what I've been dreaming of these past couple of years, ever since I made it to the States my sophomore year. So this is a dream come true for me, really. I made the trip to Gainesville for NCAA softball regionals, where Florida took on Florida Gulf Coast in game one. Eagle freshman pitcher Allison Sparkman retired the first six batters, allowing just three hits in five plus innings. All I wanted to do was just go out there and compete for my sisters around me. I think I settled in and just know I had a great defense behind me allowed me to settle in. Gator shortstop Skylar Wallace broke a scoreless tie in the third. Only a matter of time. Wallace bounces it into right center. Florida takes the lead. It's a two-run hit for Skylar Wallace. It was a good momentum starter to get a better contact spot on the ball was nice. Bearing the ball up a little bit better was huge, and I think that gave the confidence to the other batters behind me to keep getting after it and keep getting the job done. The Gators took a 6-0 win. Saturday, Wallace hit an inside-the-park home run in Florida's win over South Alabama. Yesterday, a 9-1 win over South Alabama propelled Florida to Super Regionals, where they'll host Baylor in a best-of-three season series this weekend. One local game this week, FPC hosts Pine Ridge in their spring football game Thursday, 7 p.m. at Sal Campanella Stadium. Tomorrow, FPC will host their Athletic Awards Night. Join Rich Carroll and I live from the red carpet at 5 p.m. on the WNTF Facebook page and the Flagler Radio YouTube channel. We are your home for local sports with updates Mondays and Fridays. From the WNTF Sports Desk, I'm Mike Lucio.